Okay, so uh, Craig, you and Sinise asked uh, the question, uh, is it possible? What, can you, how can you have an, an, an opinion that offends nobody? Okay, so what do you think, Craig? I don't really think you can have an opinion that doesn't offend anybody because you're always going to disagree with somebody and that person could be offended that you're here with a different from yours. Mm. You give us an example of something you're talking about. It's abortion. You can say, I think abortions are right. You can say, oh, I think abortions are wrong. You can say, I think abortions are wrong. I agree. I've actually got a new film from Dog Noel, who's got a big success in Britain, but, but India didn't like the film's form dog. So, like, but it's a big success in India, but they still didn't accept the fact that they didn't. They didn't like the, the term, they thought it was had negative connotations. Uh -huh. Although the film wasn't set meant to do that, but so you can offend somebody without, without even meaning it. Yeah. Any thoughts? Yep. I agree with that because, like, um, a lot of people take offence to stuff that isn't meant to be offensive, but you think that's an opinion of them. Can you think of an, of an opinion that someone else has had that's made you feel offended? Although possibly they didn't mean to offend you. Because yeah. it's like, um, that thing with Johnson, Russell Brand on the radio, Andrew Sachs, they didn't mean that to be really offensive, it was just a joke, but like, a lot of people took it to be offensive. Okay, we take, uh, take a new question there. Uh, can we take uh, the question that uh, Robert and Rebecca asked? Is there, is there a way to stop people stereotyping? So, Rebecca, would you like to kick off with that question? I don't think there is, because stereotyping has been around for ages, and the majority of people do it, whether they mean it in an offensive way or not. It's just something that's always been there, and I don't really think there is a way that you can stop it. Okay, so you already had a discussion about this before, sir. And you said that people put they stereotype you because you, you put everybody at chat you so because it helps you remember stuff like that. So stereotyping can be a helpful thing. Mm -hmm. But when does it stop being helpful then? When you start judging people So is it possible then uh, to stereotype without judging? Mm -hmm. You could make schools more well. Nationalities, that, to prove that, let's say, that other countries think Scots people, so the Scottish people in general from gang there all the time work out, <laughs> and that's the, that's like an English school, so you can like show them their culture and all that, and uh, maybe we can move to the West. But I disagree, because like, if you've not been talking about like, um, anti-racism and stuff for like years, and stuff stereotyping, and like, it hasn't changed much, and that's what do you think about that? Um, I think it's bad because it's like good to have like um, a lot of different um, races in society because like it makes people like more friendly and welcome like with other people in the world and stuff and like that means it's less stereotyping but like we still get a lot of stereotyping and stuff. Well, if you think that, and you think a lot of people don't think that, and, and they're still racist, then how come you've got those ideas? Where did you get them from, and how can we get those ideas if you think they're important for other people to get? How can you get other people to think the way you think? Did you know guys they have this before? I'm a person not legal. We like to change. Mm -hmm. We see that in how do you know they didn't work? Because they took the mask, they took the bubbles for that. But they don't always do that with an advertising campaign. They didn't like, they didn't like, say they owned, they were brain, they were catchphrase. Did you see the stories? Catchphrase, people. Mm. Like, if you see my catchphrase, would you really say I'm a person not legal? Like, if somebody, like, people, if you want to talk to people, say it's true. Was that a helpful catchphrase? Aye. Do you think that would have helped people who had some sort of disability? Mm -hmm. Can change it, 
to change anything. So innovators know much more. Okay. Any changes that will be out there is more mature. Right. If you can't change it with advertising, how can you change them? <laughs> Give me some answer though. If you were in charge, are we saying this is hopeless then? Well, you could start them, like learn more about racism and stuff, like at primary instead of like just secondary. And then like, it might help because it probably depends on your family and upbringing as well. So, but if your mum and dad say, oh yeah, like they're racist and all that, then you're probably going to go along with it. But then if they're not, then you'll probably be different and you'll be more accepting to people. things real. Just learning stuff and education. This is all for money, so when it comes to getting money, then that's going to be real. comes to getting a job. You hear agreement or disagreement with that? Uh, the, the reason that we're doing education is for money. think of a, something that they have learned in school over the last couple of years that they think they would be using in their jobs but they've, they've been glad they've learned it for some reason other than money for, for some just out of interest or pleasure I think it's something they've learned in school that would fit into that category give us an example Billy? As important as uh, 
subject areas of learning, like you know, learning facts about you know, science or geography or music, are the social skills as important? Um, I think the candidate probably would like to see those things. It's like how you set yourself and stuff. It's like say on the phone, stuff like that. Where, where do you learn social skills in school? Exactly. So that's built into just standard education and classroom practice. Yep. Okay, let's move on to another question then. Let's take the question then. Eddie's question. Uh, if nobody follows these rules, I guess if, if adults mainly, you thinking, don't follow the rules, what gets done? Well, it gives you this, this thing, and um, it tells you all, all the things that we're going to do, but then it doesn't tell you anything about what, what you can do if it doesn't work. So, like, this is, what's it say that? It says, we have a right to draw attention to our genius. It's like, an adult, like, tells you not, well, you don't know what to do, do you? So you're asking, if, if there's nothing that's done, if, this, if these rules are broken, is it worth having the rules? Yeah. Right. What, what do we think about that then? Uh, I agree with Eddie because like, it's not as if anybody's actually going to care. There's no way like, nothing's going to happen if they, they do so. Well, the, the council says they care. The council says they're, they're taking this seriously and they, well, do, they do want these to be implemented. So. What are they actually doing? Do they enforce them? Well, what do you think they should do? See, I don't really want to make any enforcement. Really? See how you said that the council are trying to go right? And you actually just got up class and tell you that I think you're a sad teacher, then he's going to get about it. That came out of the same as a thing you want. So, how do you think that when they said that that's a good day? Because he's got up to that. That's my opinion, but I was going to look at it. That is your opinion. No. <laughs> <laughs> if it was, but uh, if you went up, if you stood up and said to me, you, "You're a crap teacher," uh, would that not hurt my feelings? And that's. Uh, I don't think it's an opinion. It's still Right. So we're back to the question there of: Is it possible to have an opinion and always not hurt other people's feelings? Mm. Right. So what do you think should happen in that situation if you think? that I'm a crap teacher, what, what should you be able to do? Right. So find ways to give you power to put your opinion across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Solutions. What, what do you mean by solutions? I don't know ways that there's no actual practical way that people can change these. So you think that should be the next step? There's no advice here. It's just <laughs> right. So you'd, you'd want a follow-up to the children's chapter, right. uh, explaining how these things could be done and what what complaint you could make if you felt that your needs weren't being met. Okay, thoughts about that? Uh, Shanice? I think like it's a nice idea to do, but like the reality is we can't, they, they won't work because we can't get everybody to have their mindset to think the same way. Like not everybody will think the same way, you can't change people thinking that way. Do you mean children or adults? Well, both kinds of, because like, children like, at some at to some extent they can be changed, like their minds can be set, like for some of them can they? and then like adults they kind of feel not in a certain way, so like their minds are really set, like certain things. Can I ask you, can you give us an example of something that you think that children's minds could be set in a way that can't be changed? Mm -hmm. Or adults? Because I mean, as, a, as an educator I, I'm very keen on the idea that, that people's minds can always be changed if they see a, a better idea. Like in some ways they can, but like 
like do these rules can you really like change somebody to leave like like when it comes to religion and stuff? Can you like change one person's thought on like certain religion? Like it's not like just their mind, but the heart is kinda of set on the religion as well. You kinda of change that really. I think you could say how strong the person's views are because of like if they've been raised to be like racist and all that in a family for years, they'll probably have a bit strong view and they'll be hard to change their mind. Like others, so like, they'll just be acting racist to me, like their pals are that way, so they might be easily persuaded to do something else. See, I find it quite stupid, right? But do you know what I'm saying, right? Because Rangers and that, we don't have like, well, like, can they be a lot? And my sister spoke to her and she just changed her mind. She just decided she had to spoke to her and how did that go down? And how is it now? I've got to get used to it and accept it. Does she get carried on about it? But is there bad feeling in the family about it? So there's a situation where, where it's at. You think of any, any other areas where you maybe have got different ideas from your, from your parents? What about homophobia? That seems to be something that's changing about these days that maybe in the last generation there was less acceptance of people people's gender but it seems to me now that a lot of young people are quite accepting of uh, different approaches to gender and people being homosexual any thoughts on that? and what's caused that change? Is it, is it you thinking for yourself, or maybe uh, uh, meeting somebody who was homosexual and thinking, no, they're, they're actually, you know, there's, there's nothing <laughs> funny about them at all? Uh, I probably meet people who are gay. So, so personal experience can change things. So we don't need to always sort of hold on to the beliefs that people have had in the past. Well, you mentioned slavery earlier on is something that, um, you know, people just took it for granted. But now, they think, oh, it's a terrible thing. Or I, I used to give people the belt in school. Now I couldn't countenance the idea of, you know, giving it any of you the belt. It would just seem ridiculous. Billy, you, you've helped us a lot in this discussion. You've picked one. Okay, yeah. Who asked that one? That was uh, Xander Harrison. So, Xander, your question. Uh, how did you phrase it? Why do you think some? Why do some people think children just talk rubbish? Yeah, well, I was thinking because it says here that um, young people should be interpreted to believe what they think, but when it, a lot of people don't take into account what young people think because they think that they will be like naive and stuff and so it's a stereotype that. Yeah. So it's funny. Hi. Right. When you say you have to push to that, uh, you should be able to say that they think they see the kids on the side, 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 they see the What's the difference between trying to make a difference and really caring? They'd be... They'd find more... Or they'd find actual solutions to problems they wouldn't just hand out the school. Right. Is that it? I agree, I agree kind of, because like... It's like, just what I like for... Like, they can put like a lot more effort like in the videos and adverts or something. But I've got my money and stuff. So... Do you think of, of video campaigns, uh, you know, TV video campaigns, uh, a useful thing to do? Yeah. Um, you're saying you want this to be backed up by, are you by? I believe, not 
Right. And what what would you want the message of those videos to be? How do you feel about the way you are treated by adults in terms of <coughs> adults listening to you? Uh, say in this school, what, what thoughts do you have on that? About how well you are listened to in this school? Um, I think it can sometimes depend on the situation. Like, um, I don't know, like last year they gave us a sheet with statements and we want to say whether we agree or disagree or like strongly agree or strongly disagree. But there wasn't any real discussion about it, it was just like a sheet that they gave it and handed back in and then, um, like, I think if you really wanted to say something and you went to see somebody then they would listen but I'm not sure if they could do anything about it. So you get heard, but you're asking whether anything gets done about it as a result? Mm -hmm. right. If you've got something to say in this school, would you get listened to? In this school, I have, but like, you know, it's nice to have Right. Awesome. Jordan, what do you think? <laughs> How seriously are your opinions taken in school? So there's no feedback to you. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca? I think there's a really big knock to what Jordan says, but it's like I think now that we're seniors, we get teachers and other staff in the school listen to you more than when you were in the younger school because they kind of just disregard what you say when you're younger, but they start respecting you more as you go further up the school. Why is that? I think they think that you know more what you're talking about when you're older than when you're younger. And what's your opinion on that? I don't think it's right. I think everybody should be listened to and everybody is entitled to what they say and have their own views on everything. And I think everybody should be listened to equally, no matter what age they are. Alexander. I agree with Rebecca's idea because like, the idea that because like, you're like young adults now, um, huh? because you're like young adults now, uh, then that's why we should be open to that just because of the first idea of the job. And, uh, Wesley? Yeah, I think we're all listening to well in the school. Simply because, well, we have the uh, councils and stuff. And if you, if you really want to change, you say to your guidance teacher and they start like the ball rolling. And obviously, if it's nothing like, if it's a pure crazy idea that's stupid, they just tell you. And I think you're listening to more when you're in fifth and sixth year because often when you're in like first to fourth year, the ideas that you have are more like um, naive. Uh, but they're also like they're, they're more wanting to challenge things. But when you're in fifth and sixth year, you want to like resolve things. <coughs> well, yeah. like you're actually coming up with possible solutions to uh, problems. Whereas maybe when you're younger, you're just raising the problems. Is it okay to raise the problems? Or? Uh, but I just think. When you're in first to fourth year, you're just like you just went to go like you went to like go and protest against things. But obviously, when you're in fifth and sixth year, you realise oh, you can't just go and protest. So you're going to say to somebody, and you'll ask them. So you're more sophisticated in how you uh -huh. deal with questions. Uh, there's, there's one other I'd, I'd like to pick up on that is who, dis who decided to make up the charter and uh, the, the two Napoli's, you asked that question so um, somebody like, you'd like to uh, tell us why you asked that question, uh, who decided to make up the charter?
that young people must have had home care contribution in the administration job or so to say did this. So it definitely says on it that, that uh, lots of young people in different schools across Glasgow were, were consulted about their, their opinions. But uh, but your question is who who kicked the who kicked the ball off and maybe wh why did they decide to do that? Yeah. So somebody or a, or a group think it's, it's time to raise these questions and say this is what we believe should happen. Is that not? I think it's quite a good thing because it shows that they are, like, even if it is maybe too little too late, but they are actually thinking children. So you welcome it. Bye. Yeah, I would just like to put in your fridge and you might put it in your fridge and you can see it 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 and you can yeah. Would people want to do a 20 page document about it? Would that be more effective than a two page leaflet? So you think TV is the way to go? Media. Any other points? So a, a, a case study of someone who's been on the, the receiving end of bad treatment. Any other comments? Okay, thanks for your ideas.